Hello, potato, and welcome to a video about figs from space. Yes, as part of LEGO's Year of Space, I'm guessing that's what this is, there's space in everything this year, we do have LEGO Collectible Minifigure Series 26, the Space Minifigures, 12 space-themed minifigures to collect. These snuck out back on May the 1st alongside all of the Star Wars Day stuff. I think they did this last year, too. They released a minifigure set on May 1st then as well. And this time I did not order them from Lego. I didn't order the boxes. I like those boxes because they're good for storing things in too. But I didn't order the boxes for a couple reasons. Uh, one, they do seem to have duplicates of them. I think we discovered that in the last series that uh, I had to struggle a bit to find the last, I think, one or two figures that I needed. And two, these figures were, were on the street in stores early. I found some of these before May the 1st. And I saw people posting from like mid-April their pictures of their collections that they'd already picked up. So like everybody, except for Lego, broke street trade on this. Now, I have a confession to make. So in the first, I think the Marvel ones, and I think maybe to a lesser degree in the last one, I complained heartily and heavily about these boxes because I'm a fondler. I'm the person that goes through and fondles the package, figure out just the figures I need to kind of cut down on the duplicates. These are five bucks a piece and I don't need generally duplicates of many of them. But then with the last series, people finally realized that these, uh, or figured out how to decode what these QR codes on the bottom of the boxes mean. And there was a list released of the numbers and I could use my phone to just scan the QR codes. It has to be the big ones, not the little ones. It has to be the bigger ones to see what was in there so I could find the last ones that I needed. Well, since then, or I guess around that time, there have been apps released that, among other things, have minifigure identifying scanners in them. I'm using one called OMG Bricks. There might be better ones out there. This might be stealing my data. I don't know, but I do know that if I look at this QR code here on my phone, it identifies that this is the robot made. So I'm able to actually go through much faster than fondling days and scan all the minifigures and find what I want. I, I found, I think, uh, 10 of them. I initially found like a half a box and I got like the first 10 in like three or four minutes. And I had to go back and you know, I had to go back to find a store that when they restocked to buy the rest of them. But yeah, it was actually much, much faster than the old fondling days. And uh, you look like less of a weirdo scanning things on your phone than you do getting your hands all up on them. So unless Lego like removes these QR codes for the next series, I'm gonna say I've made my piece. I've made my piece with the cardboard boxes and indeed now find them to be possibly a bit of an improvement over the old foil packets. I still think there's ultimately more landfill here, but it is more biodegradable or recyclable or whatever. So assuming the OMG app worked properly, we should have the whole collection here plus two intentional duplicates. There was a couple that I picked up duplicates of. There's a couple more that I want to get duplicates of for use in my uh, normal displays, like one for Halloween, one for the normal Spring City. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for more of these because there's a couple more that I do want to get dupes of, but we should have here all 12 plus two duplicates. So let's start cracking them open. I think it showed that this one, I'm not gonna like scan each one. We can have a little bit of surprise as we go, just with the knowledge that there should only be two duplicates. I think this one, yeah, this one was the Robo Nanny, a Robo Maid, I guess it was. There's still more in there. There we go. And I got this one because I, I liked this one because of the uh, the little space baby. I think a couple series ago we had a brown space baby. This time we have a pink space baby. But here's the whole collection. We got some Blacktron characters, some Mtron characters. We've got uh, who else do we have? We don't have what we don't have is a traditional space figure, which is weird for the space series to not have a traditional space figure. We have a space baby in that style, but not a classic space figure. But yeah, let's, uh, let's put 
the robot made together. And here is our robot maid. She does not have a second face. She has actually a charging port on the back of her head and you can see her battery level back there as well. And that's covered up by her hairpiece. Nice little little blue hairpiece there. And I guess like a little like a guess it was like a little medical symbol on her chest. I don't know if she's to say she was a nurse. I think I guess it said she was a nurse. So yeah, it's probably meant to be a little medical logo. And they have special base plates. They have stars on them. They're full of stars. To let you know, they are specifically for the spacers. There's only been a few series that have had non just straight black plates. I feel like one had white plates. And I think the Batman movie ones may have had a special plate color. Put you over there and move on to our second one. I think it showed this was what the uh, Orion or the, the Beetle Beetleborg Beetle Zord. I was never super into the space ones, and I definitely wasn't around so much for the uh, Blacktron Mtron period. Now there are people who have like real, real high esteem for those, but yeah, this is a this one's one of the Mtrons. And it's not it's not a character that I have any particular affinity for, but it does look cool. So let's put it together. All right, there is our Mtron. I think he said it was a heavy loader. So I'm guessing that is meant to be a little arm there to help him pick up things, some extra bits, get rid of them. But I guess then you can put his heavy box here like that so we can carry it. He has two faces here. So instead of giving you the glass front on the minifig on the, uh, the helmet here, they've actually just printed like a blue filter over his face. And then you on the back here have his his non-helmeted face, if you want to take the helmet off. But of course, he has no hairpiece. So if you do that, you're going to have the back of his face. That seems like um, a weird oversight for them, honestly. Usually, when they do something, there's like a hairpiece as well. Unless they're just intending you, maybe when he's not powered up. Or maybe it's just, you know, just maybe meant to be your, uh, your preference. Do you want the full-on yellow face, or do you want that... I guess it's not supposed to be, to me it looks like it's supposed to be the glass, but I guess actually maybe it's supposed to be the heads up display from his point of view. So it's just, I guess him when he's actually working and then the other one is him when he's not. It's a nice little mini build though. I like the backpack. I don't, I think I've ever had this piece before and I'm sure I haven't ever had this. So we'll be seeing that in more of like the space series. Cause you know, they've been like bringing back Blacktron stuff. Maybe we'll see some more Mtron stuff too. But he was actually one of the last ones that I got. I know a lot of people really like the Blacktron and Mtron stuff. But he was one of the ones that I didn't get in my original go-round. And I had to go back and find when they restocked. But I found him. And now I've got him. And now we're on to the third box. Which is... Now this is the, uh, was it the Beetle Zord? Beetle... They don't have the names on it. I wonder how... It is that the app has names for them all when they don't have names on their little paper. But yeah, so it's a little little alien beetle zord thing. Let's put him together. There we go, a little bug alien. It's got the kind of a, those like clawed foot wings. I think we saw those on the harpy in the last series. We've got a very kind of um, Aliens reminiscent head shape there, but with pincers on the front. Awesome wings. It's a really nicely designed character. I am disappointed. If I went to point about this series, my disappointment is that uh, there's nobody from in the style of the Alien Invasion aliens. Those are really cool. There was a minifigure series around back around that time that had one in it. But yeah, they didn't bring that back for this. They just brought back like classic space or the, the, the feel of classic space and then of um, Blacktron Mtron era. I don't know the name for that particular series, but I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna keep calling it Blacktron Mtron era. But nice, uh, probably actually, one of the, maybe I'll go back and try to find a second one of him as well for to go in the Halloween display or something. 
He's kind of cool looking. Moving on. Because it's going to be quite a long video. But we're going to go through all, we're gonna all of them at one time. We're not in a, no part twos on this. And then we have here, I think this was the robot butler to go with the robot nurse there. Let's uh, put this one together. All right, we have extra bits again. We have an extra white poo and an extra whisk. And so this has one of the things I really don't enjoy in Lego, which is pieces that aren't fastened down. The little white, whatever it is he's whipping, comes out of there and it's not fastened in. But I feel like that's weighed off or balanced out by, I love these unique feet, these very like spacey robot, like lost in space, not lost, but forbidden planet, like forbidden planet type legs. I would love to see more stuff with that. Again, another one I would consider getting just to get more of these leg pieces to like make my own robots. He appears to be running by a video cassette and get a look at his face. Very simple robot face with I don't know, some sort of like an eject port on the back there. But I love the uh, love the use of the little sphere there for a helmet. It is it's very actually quite thick, so it distorts the face a little bit in like the best possible way. I, I think he's my favorite one so far. I, I really love those legs. I don't like the little loose bit to fall off there, but I do love those legs. So so far, I mean, it's a pretty good series. A lot of creativity in this series. I mean. Not a ton of stuff I could use in my displays. So he can maybe go in like Halloween. Oh, this is another, the other one that I had to go back to find on the restock. It is the alien tourist. Let's put him together. We have an extra camera lens with him and yep, he is all built. And this is another one I would consider going back to finding a second one of to maybe put into the, I don't know, maybe into like the summer, the summer carnival, maybe into the museum in uh, in the Spring Village. Look at that little backpack there. Again, it's, I think it's a new piece. A little, not loving the color of that fedora, but it's nice that there's a fedora there. I will say one criticism about him is it does have the no good, very bad, should not be made child legs that do not bend. Uh, sometimes we get figures of them, sometimes without. I don't really understand the reasoning on that. But uh, that is the only complaint I have about him. He has a nifty little, presumably it says, I heart earth on it. I mean, we can see the heart in the earth. We can't see if it's, if it's him loving earth or, you know, what loves earth. But uh, he, he's... A very neat little figure, a nice design, fairly simple face. But I wouldn't mind seeing more like gray aliens. Not, I think design-wise, objectively, not as cool as the robot butler. But again, one that I could see having use for duplicates of. Alright, so we're about halfway through the collection now. Like I said, we do have two duplicates here, so there will be two extras somewhere throughout it. But now we have, I don't know, like, like Retro Action Space Girl. Let's put her together. All right, here we go. There's our Retro Action Space Girl. Kind of definitely giving off those 1950s sci-fi vibes. She's even got like an atom on her shoulder there. She has her little silver robot dog. We have like Angry Fish. She has like green lipstick on. I don't know if you picked that up on the camera there. But she has the green lipstick. And uh, she just has like two kind of two versions of angry face, action face. She is not. She she's not messing around. She is a person of action, with her little '50s retro blaster. The dog is not going to stay on there. I will have to figure out something to do with him. Probably put him on like a, a one by two, and then fasten that on there. That would probably work. But nice. I like the helmet. I think that is a new piece. She got the little skirt piece. You don't see that too often. Fairly plain design of the actual body, but nicely printed and appropriate for what it's meant to be. Not, not one of my favorites so far, but definitely a nice figure. Well thought out, well designed. And I'm pretty sure we have like a 50s 
guy from an earlier series, not space obviously, that uh, would match her. In the same way like in the past we've had a figure skater that matched the figure skater from like series three or four. All right, next we have Orion. Let's put him together. And there we go, there's Orion. I really, I do like the, the fact that you can see through a lot of this one. I like that we do have the three stars here of Orion's belt. Uh, interesting though that, you know, of course the constellation is normally shown having a bow, as you can see on the constellation as it's printed on the shield, but instead of giving him a club and a shield, I guess, I mean, it looks cool. And I'm sure there's some mythological reason where he's, you know, used the club. But I mean, it's just funny that the constellation literally has him with a bow and they've given him a club in the figure. But it's not designed, very glittery in the legs and the face. For a guy with a club and a shield, he does look very happy. And he does not have a second face, which is odd. I would have expected him to have like a, I don't know, a warrior look on him. Also cool version of this hairpiece. And it's not a new hairpiece, but I've definitely never seen it looking like that before. Not one I think I could need seconds of, but very cool little figure to add to the collection. And um, again, just you, you don't get a lot of transparent figures. I'm not gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in the front row here. I'm gonna say he does, does stand out from the others, just from uniqueness. All right, let's keep going here. Next up we have, Okay, we have our other Robomania. I did intentionally buy two of these because I wanted the second Space Baby. Let's put it together. All right, there we go. There's our second Robo Nurse. And yeah, I, I basically I just wanted the second Space Baby. I think I got a duplicate Space Baby of the last one too. So nothing else to say about her. She's not actually for another display. She just, I just liked the Space Baby. So I wanted a second one. So we have what, six left now. So one more duplicate and five more that we have not seen. Let's just in there, hold on. Another little green guy. All right, looks like we have the alien imposter. Let's put him together. All right, we have an extra little transmitter antenna thing here. Get that to the side. We have, we have the alien imposter. He is pretending to be a minifigure, but he's really one of these little green one-eyed microfigure guys. Because if you look at the back of his head, you can see the little microfigure that is controlling him. Also, he's got like a little, I didn't know that was gonna be there. He's got a little like a crank, like the back of Fallout power armor to open the back of the suit up to climb inside. Now it's not a perfect disguise aside from having the uh the big door on the back of him there we do have this antenna sticking out of the top which might be a bit of a giveaway as to who he is but i i think he would look cool maybe in the museum or another one we get for like for halloween but for for being actually honestly probably the plainest figure in the series it's just like a you know standard outfit you could put that head on a, literally any body to make them into an alien only it's only the back that uh kind of makes it unique. This is probably, possibly at least, my favorite in the set. I just, again, it kind of evokes more of that kind of 1950s sci-fi, obviously not so much of the like space opera version, but of like the, you know, alien invasion stuff, body snatchers sorts of things. I'm gonna put him at the front because I think he's probably gonna actually be my favorite. Moving on, we have, like, I don't know, I don't remember what his name was, like Saucer Man or something like that. Let's put him together. All right, there we go. Uh, another one's kind of fairly plain, although he does, he does match in with the base plate very nicely because of his uh, star-covered body. I'm not sure, what is that? Oh, bit of fluff. I'm not sure, is this supposed to actually be an alien? Is this just somebody like cosplaying as a flying saucer? Like if I had a, um, if I had made like a little Lego like comic book convention, he'd be great as a cosplayer in there. 
I like the use of the the the, that, the saucer for the head covering there. Oh, we do have earth on the back here. And it's, it's probably one of the less creative designs in this collection, but I do really like it. I like, I just, I like what they've done with it. It's, it's, it doesn't need to do a lot to be a good figure. He definitely goes in the second row. He's not a back row guy. Next up. This is one that I've heard a lot of people online say they, uh, have a look for. I think this is another another one's connected to the Mtron Blacktron era. Let's let's put them together. All right, here's our little ice warrior character. Was there a series for this? I know there was like Rock Raiders, but I'm was I, I, part of me remembers there being like an ice space one that I think like we have our two faces. Again, not a not a happy person. She's she's definitely a person of action. We have angry face and kind of vaguely smirky face. And then she does come with what I commented on for the Mtron guy. Is that yeah, she has the removable helmet, but she also has a hairpiece. I was kind of surprised he didn't have that, but again, I think maybe that's not supposed to be the glass on his helmet. That's just supposed to be his heads up display. She's like, I kind of want to get a second one because I kind of want another little robot penguin. Honestly, a, the robot dog is also pretty cool. Let's put you in your armored helmet. It's kind of a Karen-y haircut, isn't it? The chainsaw is nice. Uh, the armor is nice. Printing is good. But yeah, really, it's, to me, it's, it's the penguin that makes this one for me. That's... That's the reason I would want a second one of those, is to get another one of those little space robot penguins. We have a robot dog and a robot penguin in this series. And here is the other duplicate I got intentionally. Another imposter. Put him together. All right. So he is definitely going to go. One of them will definitely go in the museum. And I think the other one will go in the Halloween display, just because... They're pretty cool. Also, with the extra little antenna bits, I know we have those figures that have little holes in their head despite not having anything to go in them, like uh, Hermione in last year's advent calendar. Maybe give her a, give her an antenna instead of instead of the flame that I put on her head, just because she's always so angry. It seemed appropriate to have uh, some of the extra candle flames on her head. All right, so our last two should all be should both be. New ones, whoa, this is, all right, the, the modern astronaut one is uh, the one that's definitely got the most involved build here. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Got a few extra pieces with this one as well. Get them off to the side. But she's definitely the most involved build of this collection because it's a more modern looking astronaut although she does have the uh, classic space logo on her both her outfit and on her little extra vehicular activity booster pack which is really cool i'm noticing now that we do seem to have I didn't know it didn't amount to the female character. I guess we have the Mtron's male, and Orion, I guess, is technically male. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. We have the, the astronaut, the ice cutter, and the 50s space girl are all females. Don't know if there's significance to that, but still a cool figure. And again, it's, it's a spacesuit. You could always swap another head in there, I suppose, but it wouldn't have the same printing. There's no second face on this, because it is... Just like, you know, the little head cap they wear under their helmets. But it's definitely one of the more impressive figures. I mean, just objectively, I don't have any use for like a second one necessarily, but I think I do have, from years and years ago, I think I have a an astronaut in a similar but less detailed suit that came with like a little lunar rover. Like a little tiny, like, cheapy poly bag like lunar, lunar rover. But yeah, it's definitely... I mean, I'm gonna say, I was gonna say objectively, I'm gonna say this is 
the most impressive build in this uh, collection. I don't know if it's exactly my favorite compared to the uh, imposter there, but it's it's certainly, I think, just the most impressive figure in this series overall. All right, and our last figure is the little Blacktron guy. Let's build him up. All right, there's our last one. The Blacktron mutant came with an extra mohawk and an extra little breather mask. And another one that's very interesting, I think we, uh, I think last time we saw these like multiple arms here was in the Disney 100. I think Stitch had arms like that. We do have the one normal leg and one like mutant lizard talon leg. I do like the mohawk hairpiece. It does have a single face because the uh, back of the head is exposed. The breather does not quite sit in front of the mouth right, but yeah, I have it on the right way. I thought maybe I'd have it upside down, but oh, there we go. I just didn't have it pushed down all the way. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. So again, I wasn't into Blacktron and Mtron era, so this doesn't really bring back a nostalgia for me that I think it's going to for other people. But it's a cool looking character. It's not it's not one that really impresses me like the most. So yeah, my most impressive ones, I think, of the whole collection here is of course I love the uh, imposter, I think the best. Definitely have plans for him. I think this one is the most impressive build. It's certainly the most involved build. But I think the Mtron guy's little little uh, loader pack there is really cool. I love the sculpting or the design on the beetle alien. Okay, I may, may go back for more, more, another one of him. I may go back for another one of him. I guess he'd be good in Halloween, like in the Haunted Hayride area, since it does appear to be a costume. I kind of want another another penguin. But yeah, my favorite, my favorite is, even though I think this is probably just like technically the most impressive, my favorite is the alien imposter. Just that look on his face. The little alien microfigs. I think that is probably the best use of microfigs I have seen since they started making them. And uh, yeah, I just, I think he is the most impressive of them in here for me. I mean, not the most like technically impressive. That's still this. It's a great little mini build to build the pack there. I'm a little surprised actually since they've already revealed what the advent calendar is going to be. They didn't do like a, a space advent calendar to finish off the year of Lego space with a space advent calendar. But I mean, there's still time. They could reveal something else, right? Right. It's only, it's only May. At least as I'm, when I'm recording this, it's only May. Who knows when you're watching it or what they may have announced since I recorded this. But that is Lego collectible minifigure series 26, the space series. What do you think? Who is your favorite? Do you have like, special places in your heart for Mtron and Blacktron? Do those mean things to you that they just don't mean to me? Let me know in the comments. Let me know who your favorite figure is. Let me know who your least favorite figure is. And let me know, oh, whatever else you want to let me know as long as it's like reasonably civil. But with that, we will finish off another blind box video, another Lego video. And I do hope you found it at all interesting or entertaining. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I do thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.